I'd ask you to consider what was life like 30 years ago. The world was an incredibly different place, but unfortunately, that is the world that patients with brain cancer live in today. According to the National Brain Tumor Society, mortality rates for brain cancers have barely improved in the past 30 years. For glioblastoma, one of the most aggressive forms of brain cancer, the statistics are shocking. The one-year survival rate is a dismally low 37.2%. But why is this the case? Why, despite incredible advances in imaging technology, surgical techniques, and a general understanding of cancer, do we fail to improve outcomes for patients diagnosed with the most aggressive cancers? It's because we've only recently started to jump on the field of precision medicine, or tailoring an individual specific treatment to the characteristics of their tumor. In the context of cancer, precision medicine means recognizing one key fact. Cancer is caused by genetic mutations. And even though multiple patients may be diagnosed with the same cancer, the molecular causes of this cancer may be very different. So we cannot expect the same treatment to work for both. In this line of thinking, we should first identify the molecular changes that are associated with the patient's cancer, and then prescribe a therapy that targets that specific change. And while this sounds like a great solution, there is a little bit of a disconnect. We have made leaps and bounds in diagnosing cancer, and we've also made a lot of progress in creating new targeted drugs. But we have not significantly sped up the process for obtaining information about a tumor. The current method to, de to determining this molecular information is both inaccessible and very expensive. The process includes whole genome sequencing, RNA expression analysis, and these are tests that may take upwards of several weeks. In addition, a trained pathologist must examine the slides. This process is too slow in the context of cancer. For patients diagnosed with glioblastoma, for example, the median survival rate is less than one year. Every day counts towards increasing the chances of survival. We can do better. And this is where artificial intelligence comes in. Artificial intelligence is all about presenting established data to a computer to help it make inferences when presented with new data. As a field, artificial intelligence has exploded in the past few decades. So as you can see in this graph, the fields with artificial intelligence that have had the greatest growth have been deep learning, computer vision, and neural networks. So, what is the relationship between all of these different ideas? Deep learning is a field of learning data representations. Computer vision is the field of gaining insights into digital information, so images, videos. And neural networks fall exactly at the intersection of these two cutting edge fields. There are computing architectures that are actually inspired by the biological nervous system, and they enable learning from observational data. So right now, what are these technologies really good at doing? AI is very good at solving pattern-based visual recognition problems. So essentially, putting images into different categories based on patterns in the images. For example, artificial intelligence algorithms have diagnosed cancer from MRI scans with higher accuracy than human radiologists. Robotic surgery has reduced patient complications by over 20%. And virtual assistant chatbots stand to save the healthcare industry over $20 billion annually. So knowing the scope and the power of artificial intelligence, I thought, what if we can use this powerful technology to take information that doctors are already collecting, say a brain biopsy scan, and predict a tumor's molecular information from that image? Essentially, by looking at the image on the left, you can generate a report such as that on the right. It sounds like a really simple idea, but surprisingly has not been extensively studied. So when I first proposed this concept to a neuropathologist, this is the reaction that I got. If you could write a program to do that, it would be an incredible step in the treatment of cancer. But it seems impossible. I can't identify molecular changes like that in a brain biopsy image, and I've had over 30 years of training. 
These morphological changes, if they do exist, are too small to see. What makes you think that this is possible? This is my response. Um, I knew it was possible because I knew what artificial intelligence was capable of. These algorithms can analyze vast amounts of data to detect changes that are so minute that they are invisible to the human eye. They can recognize patterns across multiple data inputs that we cannot even comprehend. So born from this vision of artificial intelligence accelerating the identification of tumor information is a project that I call GlioVision. But first, data. Uh, the main ingredient of artificial intelligence algorithms is data. It's pretty intuitive. Let's say you were studying for a test. If you had access to more information, then that means you can learn from more information, which means you can make a more accurate guess in the future. The same principle applies to an artificial intelligence algorithm. So for this project, I gathered over 350 patients' worth of data in the form of high-quality brain biopsy slides of patients with glioblastoma. So you can see some of the examples up here. And I realized that the problem of predicting tumor molecular information can be broken down into two separate problems. So first, in order to predict information about a cancer, you need to know where the cancer exists in the image. Um, and so this is what's called a semantic segmentation problem. We're understanding the image on a pixel-wise level. So since pathologists are trained to recognize these different tissues in a biopsy image, they're able to label the image. Um, and this information is processed using a special neural network called a fully convolutional network. And it returns an image labeling each pixel in the original image. So you can see here um, that the green color represents the cellular tumor region, where the cancer cells, the area where the cancer cells are the most dense, um, is represented in green. And after identifying the regions where the density of the cancer cells is the highest, the next step is to actually analyze and predict the molecular markers. So this second problem is a classic kind of categorization problem. We're sorting images into different categories corresponding to the different molecular characteristics. I was able to train a series of convolutional neural networks to automatically generate this molecular report. And the end result of my research was surprising, but not surprising. 100% accuracy in predicting the molecular subtype of a tumor and determining the expression status of the MGMT gene, which is heavily implicated in glioblastoma. But the most surprising part was this. By taking an artificial intelligence-based approach, this inference can be completed in just five seconds for no additional cost. So just to show you how powerful this result really is, here's a diagram showing different patches of cells sorted into their molecular subtype categories. So as you can see, they look wildly different. Um, I would not be able to look at these and sort them into these different categories. Yet, an algorithm found some unifying characteristic for each group. And this is just the beginning of work in the field of AI accelerating precision medicine. In fact, I boldly claim that there is no precision medicine without artificial intelligence. There is a huge potential for the automated mining of medical records, identifying potential therapies, and so much more. There's so much value in all of the medical information that we have amassed over the past few years. And the only technology that is capable enough to analyze it all is artificial intelligence. So why is the intersection of artificial intelligence and precision medicine a field that everybody should care about? There's a saying that everybody has been touched by cancer, whether personally, through family, through friends, or through a community. Cancer is an incredible emotional burden, but it's also a financial one. And currently, only the most advanced hospitals and cancer centers have access to the specific genetic testing ordered by specialists. So how does AI enable us to ease cancer's impossible burdens? And the answer is accessibility. And that's what makes AI so special. All you need to implement an artificial intelligence algorithm is a computer. Artificial intelligence is a democratizing force in the field of precision medicine. 
It makes cutting-edge treatment available to all. But I'm not just talking about accessibility in the context of improving cancer patients' access to world-class, cutting-edge treatment. I'm also talking about accessibility to the brightest minds and the best, most innovative ideas. I'm talking about how computer science and artificial intelligence are, technolo are technologies with a multitude of online resources that allow young scientists to significantly contribute to the scientific community. It's an opportunity to tap into undiscovered young talent. So my experience developing GlioVision has really opened my eyes to potential innovation and crossplay in the intersection of so many different fields. And as someone who has just turned 18 and is approaching her second year of involvement in the field of artificial intelligence, I strongly believe that age is just a number. Having a young perspective has really enabled me to view the field as how it can be in the future, not how it is right now. So here's my final challenge to all of you, artificial intelligence researcher or not. Rekindle a sense of youthful naivety when looking at the world. It will allow you to leave your biases behind, adopt a fresh, new perspective, and find simple solutions to complex problems. Thank you.